King of the Congo is a 15 chapter film serial from Columbia Pictures that made its debut in the year 1952. The serial begins as U.S. Air Force Captain Roger Drum shoots down an enemy combatant who is on his way to the jungles of Africa to deliver secret microfilm to his communist associates. Drum then decides to go undercover, assuming the identity of the enemy fighter pilot he blew out of the sky, in order to learn precisely what the spy is up to. Captain Drum's aircraft is then struck by lightning, and he escapes from a harrowing crash landing only to face off against aggressive cavemen. This encounter, along with the harsh jungle environment, force him to condition his body to peak perfection in order to survive. My namesake, Buster Crab, plays Thunder, King of the Congo, but you may know him better from his roles as either the fellow jungle adventurer Tarzan or the spacefaring super ace Flash Gordon. This was also the very last film serial to feature Buster Crab, who starred in movie serials as far back as 1933. Shall I get him on the wireless? Certainly not, stupid one. Gloria D. plays Fa, the queen of the Pacific rock people who live in the heart of the valley where Drum had crashed. Eventually, Fa spies the captain in one of their sacred temples, ringing the ancient gong to drive off the ape men. In the comics, the alarm actually ends up summoning the gigantic Father of All Serpents, which Drum is able to dispatch with the remaining three bullets from his revolver. Because of the roar of the pistol and the sounds of the gong, the captain is re-Christian Thunder, King of the Congo by the Rock People. Thunder, King of the Congo, first appeared in the pages of Thunder, King of the Congo, number one. Published by Magazine Enterprises in January 1952, Thunder was created by renowned master fantasy painter Frank Frazetta. Some of Frazetta's early work on a character that fans of the series Justice League Unlimited may be familiar with before he created Thunder is DC Comics' The Shining Knight. He would also do the cover art on several issues of the original Ghost Rider, which was later appropriated from Magazine Enterprises by Marvel Comics. Alexis, have you seen our copy of the Master Plan? Things would also come full circle as Frazetta would do cover work on several issues of Buster Crab comics the very same year in which Buster Crab would play the title role in King of the Congo. However, Frazetta is probably most well-known for his work on the painted covers of Conan the Barbarian and the 1983 film Fire and Ice. Prom. Interestingly enough, the original idea behind the first issue of Thunder is more of a Tarzan meets the Lost World concept, very similar to Marvel Comics' Kazar, Lord of the Savage Land. Like Kazar, Thunder operated out of an isolated setting where he could duke it out with prehistoric beasts and cavemen. Thunder even had his own pet saber-toothed tiger, who he calls Saber, just like Zabu, the pet of Marvel Comics' Kazar. For whatever reason, editorial wasn't sold on the Skull Island-esque setting, and by the end of the first issue, Thunder's adventures were relocated to Africa, where he would tangle with jungle tribes rather than cavemen, and wild boars rather than dinosaurs or giant serpents. In fact, the only holdover from the original setting in the remaining five issues of the series is Saber, the pet saber-toothed tiger. Also, the way Drum trains himself after crash landing with a bow and arrow must have had some inspiration for the Green Arrow origin story, the Green Arrow's first case that came after Thunder 1 in 1959 from Adventure Comics 259. Also, Fa, who serves as Thunder's love interest, as penciled by Frazetta, looks an awful lot like pinup girl Betty Page, but in a cave girl outfit instead of a swimsuit. Unfortunately, Gloria D., while not bad looking, is no Betty Page, and Fa barely registers as a love interest in the serial. Goodbye. The strange bird approaches from the sky. Is it friend or foe? Honestly, it seems like the editorial people behind the Thunder comics watered down the prehistoric elements so that it would be more of an attractive property for Katzman when he made the film serial. Though this is only my speculation, and I have no way of knowing that for sure. 
Although Thunder wrestling crocodiles is pretty cool, part of me wishes this was more like Flash Gordon with blown up lizards serving as dinosaurs or monsters. This would make both the rock and cave people make more sense to me as they seem to belong more in a prehistoric setting like the Savage Land than in Africa, but I guess stock footage of lions and elephants along with dressing up actors in fake looking gorilla suits was easier than creating dinosaur footage would be. Speaking of monkeys, this little guy, who as far as I can tell goes unnamed in the entirety of the 15 chapter serial, replaces Sabra as Thunder's pet. What a downgrade from a saber toothed tiger to a chimpanzee. And to boot, this little guy is pretty useless as well. He'll just sit there and clap or do nothing when Thunder gets into fights and has got to be the worst lookout ever. He never even warns Thunder when bad dudes are sneaking up on him. This chimp's no Duke the Dog from Tex Granger, that's for sure. Trump even takes this useless chimp home with him at the end of the movie. You know what? Fuck him. Fuck that stupid monkey. What do monkeys have against people in this serial anyway? Because these other monkeys are so damn noisy in this scene, going ape shit as it were, they get these poor rock people killed as they reveal their hidden position to the bad guys. What the hell, monkeys? What did the rock people ever do to you? I'll find out. Haven't you noticed that uh, he always has a convenient mental lapse whenever you question him about the message? For all the folks that like to make the comparison between Dances with Wolves and Avatar, I have to say that this film serial reminds me more of Avatar than Dances with Wolves does. The red communist bad guys, via the secret microfilm, are looking for some awesome new mineral in the Valley of Mist, where the rock people live, which will help them to rule the world. Then you got Thunder hanging with both the rock people as well as the commie bad guys, albeit Thunder's undercover with the bad guys, and then when Thunder saves one of the red baddies, Andreov, from execution, he switches sides and takes up the rock people's cause to protect their valley from the communists, exactly like all those guys who slapped on the war paint for the Navi. I'd be a, a traitor to our court. It's better to be a live traitor than a dead patriot. Not to mention you have the typical young brave that doesn't like the outsider in the role of leadership. Thunder is evil. He fend of those evil men. He will bring curse on our people. Also, one of the cliffhangers has to be a dead-on inspiration for Luke Skywalker hanging upside down in the Wampa Cave on Hoth from The Empire Strikes Back. The only difference is a jungle cat is coming after the lead hero while hanging upside down instead of a snow creature. Anyway, while the 15 chapter serials do typically drag on too long in my opinion, and this one is no exception, Buster Crab does exceptionally well in all the exciting fight scenes, and the climax of the final chapter has a pretty good one-on-one -on -one face-off between the caveman leader Kor and Thunder, which made me think of the final knife fight between Paul Muad'Dib and Fade Harkonnen in Dune. I will kill him! If you're a fan of Buster Crab, you should definitely give his last serial a look. No, my friend. I'm going to stay here and help these people learn true democracy. You see, I know how much better it is than the evil thing that was forced upon my country. 